Welcome to Three Guys and a Brit, an international podcast where we go over many subjects. As usual, I am Jericho, along with Jeej, Windu, and Caveman. Now, today we're going to talk about shortages on essentials and big pharma. Now, have you guys heard about formula shortage? Nope. So tell me about it. You actually never, you haven't heard about this shit, Jeej? Yes. Nope. yes. Bro, like 60, 70%. I'll get that exact number. Let me look it up. But 60, 70% of the entire United States is out of formula. Like you got people in Florida going from Orlando down to Miami just to find formula. I did. Okay. Yeah. I did hear about that. Yeah. I had a couple of buddies that were talking about that. Like they, if they get that WIC assistance. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you know what that is, or it's like pretty much yeah. the government gives you like a cut for like when you have babies for a certain bunch of stuff. And they were able to get like 11 cans on this wick. Dude, they can't even get the cans. And then like the only cans they get can get it's wick doesn't cover. So like they're paying like out of pocket 50, almost $50 for a can. And they're like this big. Bro, you know how much, how stressful that shit's gotta be? Like thankfully, yeah. like for example, uh, our baby's breastfeeding. I don't know if uh, Senior Caveman has ever had to go through formula. Yeah. But yeah, like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bro, I can only imagine the stress where it's like, yo, I gotta find this can or my baby will not be able to eat. Well, I mean, knock on wood, but I mean, like, that's what my buddy, they were like, planning on breastfeeding. I mean, I mean, his, I mean, his woman, she bred, uh, breastfed for like two weeks and then like stopped producing or like the, the, the milk she was producing, she couldn't give the baby. So like yeah. they had to switch the form. But man, so I mean, like, knock on wood, that something doesn't happen. But yeah, it's even known for like. So is this is this something to do with uh, what I heard about? I think it's the Abbott. I think I'm not sure, but Abbott, Abbott shut yeah. down the yeah Abbott. Um, they shut down the Michigan manufacturing plant. Is that right? Is that yeah. So there was the some uh, not there shut was down, some but altered the production. Yeah, there was some contaminated formula. So they had to shut down their their facility, and apparently, like that was like the facility uh, that produced a formula. So uh, I, I did I hear about that contaminated formula where like babies were yeah. dying and shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in that um. Uh, so fuck, what's the name? It's like a super popular brand. Like uh, we like, Similac. Similac. There we go. Yeah, and yeah. I, I remember we got like whenever we had our baby, they sent us for free like six of these tiny little bottles of Similac. Yeah. And Jessica was like, yeah. I'm not using that shit ever. We're not giving that shit to not even people that we know because that shit might be part of the contaminated batch. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, the, best thing, bro. the best thing is, is, uh, is breast milk, but you know, like, not everybody can do that. Well, Gigi's friend, man. Yeah. Shit can happen and you have to switch it up. You know, we we had a shipment from Germany. Germany had to send us uh, like, the, yeah, like, so, like, no. tw- like ten thousand cans or some shit yeah. like that. They're like, I was looking up into that as well. Like, don't U.S. has a very strict import laws on baby formulas, like something like that. And um, I think um, your president Joe Biden um, <laughs> invoked the Defense Production Act. I forget, yeah, he's European sometimes, bro. Who are the guy? Like he said, you're president. I was like. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I always forget that shit. Like, hey, my president. <laughs> Sleepy Joe. Sleepy so, Joe. Jesus. <laughs> Lee Brandon alone. So, <laughs> so then, um, like, I was looking up on it, but obviously we get CNN and CNBC news networks and all of that stuff. So, uh, so you get all the fake news. Yeah, I can't with you. Bro. Yo, so I just put it up on the screen so that our viewers can actually see. And I'm putting up a picture. This is from April of this year. So literally, at the, well, it's towards the end of April. So literally just about like two months ago, right? And th- this is what everybody's seeing. And I'll DM it to you guys so you can see it too. And it's basically just formula completely gone. The only thing left on the shelves is Similac, the one thing people are afraid to buy. You get me? Cause Yeah, yeah, man. Just, just imagine being I mean, in that situation. Though, you got to be able to look at like packing date, expiration date. Like they got to yeah, be able the, to like the average mean, person isn't going to do that. Serial number though. No, no, but I'm saying like even stores, like they should have already went through and pulled everything 
and done everything by like serial numbers because they should have been able to like narrow down like okay the batch starting with zero i mean but that's like saying they should have been able to prevent it oh well yeah but i mean yeah i mean just because they should that that batch off but i mean at the same time it's still it's like when corona came out the coronavirus the sales of the corona the beer went down like 20 30 percent just because it was called corona stupid you get me like yeah Yeah. unfortunately we don't live in a day and age that people are educated enough or intellectually motivated enough to sit there and sort through and be like hey this isn't part of the batch i should be able to use this etc people are just gonna be like similac Mm -mm. not for me boo boo you know you know i heard that hospitals are getting overwhelmed their NICU units and everything with babies that are malnourished needing food like because hospitals have like a backup to the backup worth of formula that they give to babies right because you gotta think about it for new for newborns uh the NICU and everything they have a good ammo of formula and there are like desperate mothers that can't find formula anywhere having to go to the hospital just to feed their babies yeah and then the hospital can it's give them sad, a couple bottles I, you know what uh, i'm trying to sad. think though you should be like just me like thinking in general you should be able to take like a scoop of that formula right or even a half a scoop to kind of ration it and mix it with milk like actual like whole milk and be able to mix it to be able to still provide you know what i mean a heavy dose like you think about well, i mean the, uh, a baby up to the first year can't can't uh, they can't digest cow's yeah. milk you know so they need certain nutrients from the formula or from breast milk you know um and and but the the major thing also it's is the babies that have gi issues you know like that need a specific formula you know like our our youngest son had uh had this like potato based milk he had to drink bro and, like his body just couldn't digest a formula or milk or anything like that so um he had to have a specialized formula and that's like what's really hitting parents yeah, so they, you know so they so they have to wait until like i know um this because my family members so when we were you know when she was having a child and everything like that so during this process um she was told specifically by the hospital not to have uh, not to give the baby cow's milk until the age of 12 uh 12 months sorry not 12 um he's a 12 so when, she, when the ba- <laughs> so when she turned 12 when the baby turned 12 months only that's the time to best give cow's milk rather than prior to that because it could lead to you know sickness and all those yeah. sorts of things so yeah and um up until then they were told to give you know uh, breast milk that's the best option or and if you can't produce you know some Hey, um, people are some women out there can't produce breast milk and stuff like that so that was given them as an option to give infant formula at this point so yeah ah, man, it was sad but i mean there's just a shortage on everything man on you know food um like uh, bro i it's I, I, in the auto industry you know yeah, yeah go ahead. shortage on car parts and whatnot you know what i'm saying bro. Like, there's shortage on everything bro well, it's just because no one wants to go back to fucking work man I mean, like, you know, in, in all reality, it, it's literally no one wants to go back to work because the government is just going like this. Here you go. No matter what, it's just here. Take it. It's yours. You know what I mean? Like is once they finally stop giving and giving and giving and make people actually go back to work. Well, I you'll mean, start the, seeing stuff start skyrocketing. The I mean, major like two years. I think the major part is that people are getting underpaid and overworked you know and everything is going up you know the price of like we're talking about there's a shortage on shit so there's going to be cost of living is going up still yeah Yeah, like uh, there's a huge inflation issue well i mean doing that that, 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 sorry joke but that that inflation issue is literally when you get to it breaks down to it right so people are being underpaid and overworked but that is reduced by if the employer actually hires people and but the issue is people are going to their these employers and these jobs and 
for like a cleaning job, they're asking for fucking seventeen to twenty dollars an hour. You know Bro, what I mean? Like I saw KFC oh, cashiers, KFC cashiers here in Florida. I was talking to, uh, with a caveman here about this, uh, maybe like a couple weeks ago. I actually saw a sign that said K cashier needed starting at $15 an hour at KFC, bro. Fucking KFC, I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? But look, but check this out though. If it costs you $20 to get to this job because gas is $5 a gallon, you know, you're if you're making $10 an hour, it doesn't even make sense to get, get up and go to work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It, and that's that's the major issue and the thing is that companies know this like mm -hmm. we go I, I work at dealerships all day right you go to these major dealerships that that sell hundreds of cars you know a month and now there's like 10 cars on the lot why because it's it's more cost effective it makes them more money if the customer comes into the dealership sits down and builds a car that they can just come straight from the factory to the dealership and to the customer's hands because yep. they don't have to pay those fees and, and shit like that so the corporations are undercutting the workers that's dry that's driving everything else up you know so i mean i don't think it's just as easy as people like not wanting to work well, i think it's people don't want to work and not get dude, paid for it you know well, I, I do yeah go ahead joker go ahead i i'm gonna say something afterwards so, to add to what he just said basically like if you look at it like yes i agree with jeej and some perspective too because there are some lazy ass bums who just decide, yeah who yeah, just absolutely. wants it and i agree but at the same time i have seen people who work hard right i've seen people struggle bust and company like mine that i work for i'm not gonna name it but they underpay people bro like they underpay like i was talking to windu like luckily for me i have backup options this that and everything that i can resort to right but people who are on like um let's just say a warehouse operator right he's only getting paid 10 pound an hour right even though the national minimum wage is nine pound 82 pence whatever it is but but by a few pence they give them 10 pound an hour in that 10 pound an hour this place is located in such a fucking far distance right you have to travel there if you catch a public transport it can go all the way up to an hour and a half max right but if you own your own transport you can reach there in half an hour's time yeah so looking at the cost like if you have to pay um, a lot of people over here especially in my you know people who work with me they always look at expenditure they always look at expenditure before they can look at if this job is viable enough for them right and most of the time people do work their ass off but imagine you only go eight hours a day and you come out with 80 pound a fucking hour 80 pound a day in a week times that by five right you come around with like 300 something right then you have to pay your taxes etc etc then you're only left with 200 something for the whole entire week and times that by four weeks you only come out with like what 1200 right 1200 pound a month but because of the cost of living is gone up so much your expenditure out of that 12 uh, 1200 pounds a month is only comes down to your outgoing is about 900 pounds bro this is not including food this is not including anything this is just like your car your insurance your rent your mortgage whatever it is then your bills etc etc comes up to like 900 pound in total then you're only left with about 400 between sorry 300 between 300 to 250 pound right somewhere between that range you're only left with that to survive for the whole entire month that then you have to make sure you are fed food is there etc etc and if you're a family member and it's only you who's bringing the income into the house shit's gonna be difficult bro and a lot of people just decide to up and leave right up and leave and be like you know what it's better off me being on fucking benefits than it is for me to work because when you're on benefits you're coming out with like almost 1600 1700 a fucking month which is wild you know what i mean you don't have yeah. to work you know you don't have to go yeah. to work for every kid you earn you get a child um benefit right then you get something called the child tax credits right then you get your rent paid for then they'll give you I extra know. 200 pound uh, 200 or 300 pound a month for you to survive with which you have to pay your own bills from that 
right? So it's better off for people. Like I see most of the people over here who are struggling. They're like, why am I fucking working day in, day out? And then people afterwards, I'm only coming out. Yeah, 1,200 pound. And then afterwards, people over there who are bombs, who don't want to work anything or do anything. And they're just claiming benefits from the council or the government. And is they like, Yo, he's coming out with almost 500 pound more than me and he doesn't even fucking work. And you're paying for shit? it. And you're yeah, paying yeah, yeah, for it. I was about to say, that's an, that's an issue that's going on in the States too. Especially when COVID yeah. hit. Oh, pay yeah. for it, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But if we don't pay for it, shit like, for example, you know, your free healthcare that we get is not, we, we don't get access to it, right? Um, the ser service department, like your fire, your police, safety protection, this, that, everything is not paid for if you don't pay for it. So, of course, we are paying national insurance and we are paying um, income tax, which goes towards this contribution, right? So, of course, in order to gain the, oh, you know, free education, free healthcare, this, that, and everything, in order to gain those benefits, we have to pay for it, which I'm not complaining about right which we're not complaining about what i am griping like which which pisses me off the most is why is the council like the government in our side not fucking focusing hard enough on the people who's been living off benefits for fucking years not got a job every time they go and apply for a job they come up with some bullshit excuse and the guy who's just stay. behind the counter is like signs it off is like yeah that's fine that's sure that's okay he applied it's okay he's trying you know what i mean it, it, that's what i'm pissed off about like i know one guy who's been on fucking benefits for what 11 years bro 11 years right he's like not i one day has he worked hard the i i definitely feel really comfortable i feel like benefits are a good thing for the right person right like there are times right. like i've seen benefits kick in and help individuals like for example um what was that i met this guy when i worked at autozone hey his kid had leukemia and he had to go to St. Jude's. This is like an, like an eight-year-old. Imagine how that must devastate a family. He had to go to St. Jude's and get that taken care of and whatever. And he couldn't afford to work his full-time job and be there for his kid every single day. So those benefits helped him on a monthly basis because, you know, to be able to be there for his kids, still pay his bills and stuff. I get situations like that. Like, you know what? I'm glad systems like that in place are like that. Yeah. But I also know people like I, I have a buddy he used to be a lifeguard at Legoland around the corner in, in Florida. He was as a lifeguard making around, like you said, like 300 bucks a week, give or take. Right. The moment COVID came around, lost his job. There was a COVID relief and et cetera, unemployment. He started getting paid by unemployment 1600 a month. That's already like 400 bucks more than he was already making. And then when Legoland reopened, he was like, yeah. fuck, fuck that. that. I'm not going back. Yeah. You're going to make me work out in the sun all day yeah. as a lifeguard and pay me less. He literally said, I'm going to milk this shit as much as I can, which fuck, is yeah. fucked up. Yeah, but I'm I can't blame him because the like the government no, is creating that, that environment. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You should you should never pay somebody so much. You should never pay somebody more than a minimum wage full time job can earn. See, no, I mean, no, 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 I no. What their what their job was paying them. If you if you have a consistent job, right? Because the same thing happened to uh, someone in my family. Um. He was working, he worked five days a week, whatever. As soon as this COVID shit and relief hit in, dude, he was making like double what he made a month. And he's like, I'm not gonna go back to work. Why would the fuck would I wanna go back to work? Like, yeah. it doesn't make that's sense. What, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't have problems with individuals like claiming benefits and doing all of it. Yes, it pisses me off that it's happening but the fact is that i can't blame the individual for taking advantage of the shit because the opportunity was given to them right right without any consequences put in place or any kind of a repercussions put in place for that individual to stop taking advantage of that shit right and that's what's happening right over time period that i have learned bro our employ unemployment rate in uk is high 
right? I'm not saying that it's low, but it's high. I'm not, I don't know the exact figures, but it's high, right? And in that, we have 66 million po population in this country, right? 66 is almost coming to 67, right? At this point, you tell me that 35% of the fucking employment, uh, you know, people are unemployed. It's just mind boggling. But also at the same time, again, what would you prefer? Like you can have so much money going on employer, you know, unemployment benefits, right? Then going, getting unemployed by a company and not get paid enough, not get paid enough at all to cover their expenses, they cover their mortgage, rent, bills, etc., utilities, whatever it is, right? And then on top of that, you're spending money, you're telling me you only got 200 pounds for the whole entire fucking month. Whereas when you're on benefits, you have about 400 pounds for to spend for the whole entire month. You're telling me that I wouldn't go and choose unemployment shit? Of course I would. Well, you know it, I mean? it's, you know, you do it. That, and that's why I say like, when this stuff started happening, and people started getting money from the government, the government should have put it based on, okay, so like all old unemployment used to go, all right, was you made, I think it was like 95% of your actual wage of what you made. That's what you make a week, right? You didn't make above it, you didn't make below it. It was like a 95, because it can't pay you the exactly what you were making. What a, to add on to that, I don't understand how some people get paid so well because while jessica was on maternity leave she was technically receiving unemployment checks because her like at one point her job like her job was like hey we'll provide you like six weeks six or eight weeks i think it was anything after that you have to file through the state and she only got like 60 percent of her checks at that so point it's even no like i said i wasn't too sure about the number i was just blowing it out it's like 60 to 80 percent like disability or not disability uh um, workman's comp it goes the same along the lines so like if say i got hurt at work you know knock on wood yeah they only get a percentage um, yeah you only get like 80 percent of what your actual salary is and that's still not including your taxes taken out any of that stuff it's it's there so i don't understand is they have that stuff implemented right so when it came to co this covid relief it should have been the same thing it shouldn't have been giving people more money because now it's all you did was you took away the aspect of them wanting to go back to work, wanting them to do anything because like, if, put it this way, if you're able to fucking stay at home and make literally double what you make a month, what, what are you doing? I'm gonna stay the fuck yeah. home. Hell yeah. All right. But it's, on the, on the stop side is, people were getting screwed because they couldn't do their second job. So see what a lot of people were doing was they had a second job. They may work at a gas pump. I remember like when I first, uh, we, me and my wife moved back out here from California and we moved uh, back in to New York. I got a job and then I was like, hmm, this little place I had to go get gas in the truck with. I was like, hey, they're looking for a, a clerk for a few, you know, a couple of days. I fucking picked it up, dude, just for some extra pocket cash. But if COVID was around then, you wouldn't get your benefits if you still had both jobs. You had to be completely jobless. So and that's where a lot of people were hit. But my my biggest thing is right now, like you said, Mindu, KFC is paying fuck cashiers fifteen dollars an hour. These kids don't realize. And I say kids. I mean, I'm talking about people that are like eighteen to like twenty eight that really don't have any family that don't only have themselves to take care of that's fucking great money that to is. work at a, to work at a kfc for 38 hours a week yeah i mean for and the then job, yeah and that's not excluding you probably can pick up more shifts and probably work fucking 50 or 60 hours a week i mean christ like we were looking online like uh uh yesterday because my wife just finally finished her uh this therapy course she was taking um to deal with uh autism kids right by the way that's 31 a year if you make 15 dollars an hour yeah, it's mm -hmm. 30, that's great money that's good so she, she was looking at some of these places dude and they're offering these people like 30 to like 35 dollars an hour well we were also searching on some stuff that there's a a medical is a medical marijuana or metal or marijuana distributor plant here uh in tampa 
that offering people 30 to 35 dollars with no experience just to go to work what yeah damn <laughs> But no experience, no. <laughs> yeah, I love how me and Caveman are like, "Hey, man, we're just like in a couple. Of, we're just like an hour away." Hey, Hello, send me that link, bro. <laughs> send me that link. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like I told her, so you apply for that. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you mean? I said they have no experience. I said they're not asking for any college degree in uh, plant science, whatever the fuck that's called. They're not asking for any of that. They're not asking oh. for any experience working in any agriculture or. Uh, any other miracle marijuana distributing pl places they're not asking for any of that they even said they'll train so i don't know what it is i don't know if you're working at oh. a front counter selling the stuff or if you're working in the freaking back might be working in the stuff. warehouse probably or probably. trimming it trimming or yeah whatever you're doing fucking 30 dollars Fuck, hell hell yeah. or you could be shipping yeah. and receiving just put his shit in trucks all day yeah. like i yeah. started looking into it i'm like hell yeah so, <laughs> But Hell I won't yeah. have these dumbass hours. But I'm like, shipping stuff. Do they need truck drivers? Like, true. They all those companies, drivers and shit. I'll tell you what though. So like, it's it's certain stuff like that. I mean, I'm I have a kind of a well-paying job. I mean, don't get me wrong, my hours suck. But yeah, man, it's at that point too. He's the baller like, out of all of us, confirmed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's confirmed. it's I'm actually in that state of mind where where can I make more money? I don't want to right. stop working. Yep. It's, but that's the thing. That's you know what I mean? How high that's can what I go? Differentiates, that's what differentiates between people who want to make money compared to the people who are just comfortable and set in their ways. Right? They're just happy that everything is getting paid for and don't mm -hmm. want to achieve. They're, they're not overachievers. Yeah. Right? They're just what you call a stagnant level where they're just I'm I'm Gucci. I don't have to do more. I don't have to do less. I'm just happy to go do my shit and done done done. Well, you know what's something that drives me crazy with that in mind. Sorry. Um. So I really don't understand why the government is so lenient to give away money sometimes, right? But then at the same time, the government watches people price gouge shit and watches people with like certain companies raise the prices astronomically like let's say a car at a dealership that car brand new was sixty thousand. it's now used that has thirty thousand miles they're selling it for 75 now yeah like and yeah. and they get away with it because nobody Supply stops demand, them bro and yeah no by by all means but like but like let me give you an example whenever there is a catastrophe let's say like a hurricane here in florida by law anybody selling supplies that are deemed essential cannot do more than a 15 percent price raise or it is illegal that's even high not you get me high. and that's still fucked up but even then that's a 15 percent or it is illegal but this whole covid situation like it's it's gone on for so long it's so the point that now it's not a catastrophe we're just managing through it so now for, you see formula it's like hey this little tub 50 bucks you want to have enough supply to feed your kid for three months? You better shell out two, three hundred bucks. That's all I'm saying. What it is, it's, 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 it's like, I remember, bro. I can't remember where I heard this from, but they were saying like, like, this is cool with like, essentially, you're talking about like food. They were saying like water, right? Like bottled water, drinkable water is, I think, I think I remember hearing about from, uh, in Flint, Michigan, and they're having that water issue. Um, they were trying to get water sh uh, sent in and wow. this company is like oh no I, I get what you're saying like when they had the water short something like that and they, they they're like oh it's not an essential like we don't have to lower our price bottled water is not an essential water is not an essential i'm like but it is at the same <laughs> time like your your body yeah, cannot go more than three days without water so but that's when the counter argument comes in again like you might have a great thinking behind it. You might be sitting there thinking of all sorts of shit. But bottled water is bottled water again, right? It's bottled for a fucking reason, right? Oh, because yeah. Because over here, over here, we've been given an option. Hey, man, if you can't afford bottled water, there is fucking tap water that's filtered through and you can drink that shit and it's safe to consume. And that's oh, yeah, but this was free. But, but this was coming from a place where you couldn't drink the tap. You couldn't drink the tap water. 
Yeah, there was even for months that you couldn't use the oh, water yeah. to sh- the, the base in Flint, Bro. Michigan. Like, it, like Joker, like literally Google this shit. Like it yeah. was wild. They couldn't drink it. They couldn't bathe in it. They couldn't cook with it. They couldn't. Uh, some of the water they couldn't even water their lawns and gardens with it because it was just contaminated. And it was just yeah. That's where they're like, we the have no water. But but people like Nestel. That's who it was. It wasn't Nestel. It was Nestel. They they were in that water company right and they had i believe they had a manufacturer just either outside of flint or was right in detroit and they were refusing to like send aid like refusing to send water and send all this other shit like that these people needed so then that's when people were like we need this stuff and they're like no it's not an essential like water to you water is not essential and like but at the same time, it still is. You see, like, that, yeah. if that kind of shit, I'm, I'm just saying, if that shit would have happened over here in this place, where let's just say a certain county in our country is just like contaminated with water and, you know, you couldn't do all sorts of shit. I'm guarantee you now there will be aid going from the government across every single household that's been affected in this point and they would have been offered shit like, uh, you know, bottled water, this, that and everything just to keep that thing going because those are the kind of things again it all falls under our freaking income tax and national insurance that goes under right so well you guys now, I'm not... uh, tell me if i'm yeah. wrong Joe, but don't isn't england or like england but like the uk in general aren't they kind of like considered like a socialist like a lot of people will look at it as a socialist kind of point of view but we don't we don't really give a shit because at the end of the day again it all we look at it in this point of perspective is it helps someone some way eventually regardless of their situation their income their whatever it is where however emergencies you will fall and you might need that kind of a benefit that might help you right so of course a lot of people from the outside perspective will look at it as like we are a socialist country. We are a socialist country. We are doing this. We're doing that. We're not a lot full of, socialist. No, it's more like not, a welfare we state, we right? Yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't look at it as, even as a socialist country. We don't even look yeah. at it as like a thing. We just you don't get paid like, hey, there is a backup for everything. Because you don't get yeah. paid the same as like a doctor would get paid. Like uh, in true socialist form, is everyone gets paid Everybody. the same right no exactly. matter what your profession there's no private is. industry yeah exactly yeah. so so there is what you call um the pay kind of works in different ways right so you have skilled workers then you have unskilled workers and they go according to the payment level for those then skilled and you, then you know you got your um how do you call it the civil workers as well right so civil workers following like doctors and you know all sorts of things because everyone over here unless you're hired for a private company right as a doctor let's just give you an example as a doctor right unless you have a private company or a private hospital whatever it is then you can sit there and negotiate your prices but overall over here as doctors and nurses you are under a banner and that banner is nhs which is national health service right Mm -hmm. So every hospital that we know, right, is all public hospitals, right? And depending on your expertise and depending on your skill level and what you can bring to that hospital, they will give you appropriate salary based on that, right? So your hospitals, so you don't have like private owned, like like down like here. We do. We do have private private hospitals. Yes, we do have private okay. ho- owned hospitals, but that only caters to the people who are wealthy, right? Because let's face it, only wealthy people can afford to do that shit or unless people who really do not give a shit about public hospital, right? And they were like, yo, you know what? I want to pay for my own services. They will go and apply for it, right? Okay, because well, we, have, we that, have hospitals. We have hospitals here. Like, I know like where I was, uh, it's called UVM. Uh, you guys probably know like Vermont University. Um, they were going through and they were buying this hospital, this hospital, this hospital, putting them on the same network chain because they were a privately owned hospital by a college, which I was not against because UVM, I mean, they have an amazing medical program. 
you know, a lot of doc, you can get a lot of doctors, nurses and stuff from that. And it provides people for that outreach. So what they do is they pull like if say a caveman was going to become a nurse or a doctor, right? He could do training at that hospital that's local to him oh. instead of going all so, the way to Vermont. You know what I mean? Oh, that's but like, cool. But so, we had, so like our things are technically privately owned, so as, but because as the way our not, medical systems work, they're not privately owned. So you still pay for anything. We have a similar thing, but again, all the universities that provide this medical training, you know, and all these things are all tied in with the hospital. So in Nottingham, right, we have private or public that's what, I, that's what i mean like private public, public public sorry public. public public yeah so all the all the universities work well with public hospitals you know especially the ones that giving a doctorate or you know studying for doctorate or whatever it is that they are, tra are trying to achieve right so for example in nottingham right we have we had two hospitals right before they rebranded so before it used to call city hospital and Queen's Medical Center, right? Now, these two hospitals were under NHS, but eventually uh, they wanted to make it into one big thing. So Nottingham University decided to take over that and now they have rebranded. Again, the two names are still there, City Hospital and Queen's Medical Center, because, you know, it's for the olden they terms. They ran by the college. Yeah, yeah. So, but Again, it falls now under NUH. Now it's changed from Queen's Medical Center to City Hospital, but they have a banner called NUH, which is Nottingham University Hospitals. And that is under the NHS banner, right? That regulates everything. So NHS is the biggest uh, healthcare system for us, right? As a whole, for the whole entire country, um, because NHS is run on Wales, Scotland and England and Northern Ireland, right? And they are the ones that prefer. The only thing we might have to pay- In Northern Ireland. Right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, Northern Ireland. So um, <laughs> the only thing, only thing that we might have to pay is for external things like cosmetic surgeries, right? Medication, a certain type of medication, right? Things like, you know, uh, over the counter you have to pay, things like certain prescriptions you will have to pay. But let's just say I got a broken leg today, right? I just go to the A&E. Shit's long waiting around in A&E, which is you know, accident and emergencies for people out there and what A&E is. So I will go over there. I'll wait for probably two to three hours maximum, depending on the emergency level criteria I fall under, right? Because there are some other people who might come in who's got a serious injury and they might you know tackle that issue first which i have no gripes about and again i i don't think a lot of people should give them slack especially from where i'm standing from and i'm looking at everything i hear a lot of people over here is like yo a and e in this place is garbage a and e in this place is garbage it's like yo they have a thing to follow they actually have a procedure to follow and they have to prioritize certain things in order and unfortunately if your emergency like some people go over there for fucking headache bro and they expect them to get treated uh, uh, immediately but that's right but here's the thing though that's but that's what happens when you have free health care no, but that's the thing. Like, here's the thing. You as an individual, what can you do to prevent a headache? If you get a headache right now. It's a now, fucking Tylenol. There you go. So you, your thought process is right there. But a lot of people over here. But so they again, don't have to pay for the Tylenol if they go to the hospital because they have free health care. No, no, no. But we, we, you know, we might have to depending again like for stupid shit like this we might have to but again it also like look at it this point of view it's not the hospital responsible yes we get free health care i completely understand that i completely admire that fact but at the same time there is not what you call a restriction level to enter a and e Right. There are some bums out there. I'm honestly telling you, there are some bums out there who just don't have anything better to do, but to go waste people's time. Right. And there are some individuals out there who are suffering um, by being homelessness and stuff like that. And what's better option to stay in, in an A&E or stay outside? Right. They have that thought process, too, that they go through. So unfortunately, all these kind of things take into consideration it's guest time wasted now 
health care com- you know i can go to a broken leg i can get that checked out they will send me through x-ray they will go put me through all sorts of treatments everything like that and then they'll give me the proper treatment that i need to follow through and the only thing i'll have to pay for is medication right i don't, I don't you tell him so me speaking of medication mind. hold on so speaking of medication now it's i'm going to ask this to windu as well like if in it to caveman so like speaking of medication have we noticed like at all any of our medications starting to skyrocket up any of our medications that are short um i, mean, I know like diet like di- insulin for example um so like i fucking getting expensive. I, brought, I brought this up uh, a little bit before we even went live right i have a buddy uh shout out to the homie bearded wolverine he um there was a, a mix up with his insurance and his um his pharmacy right you know those situations where you have you basically go to one pharmacy but for x amount of reasons it's like hey this time i gotta go to the pharmacy across town let's say i'm on that part of town for the day i'm like hey can you please send it to this pharmacy since i'm gonna be there for the weekend or whatever so he 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 was in that situation the pharmacy had a mix up and they were like hey we never got any insurance shit as far as we're concerned insurance doesn't cover it if you want this insulin which literally is to keep your kid alive you got to pay 600 bucks for one month supply and it was like it was like bro what <laughs> like yo like we and he was telling me that his wife was straight like arguing her ass off rightfully so in the middle of like a walgreens or whatever but she was like we can't afford that my kid is going to die if she doesn't get insulin we have insurance like walgreens deals with our insurance all the time i knew it's a new location but you guys should be able to access shit like it's like yeah, yo like our kid needs this network. yeah and he said even network. then that the best they could do to them was like okay so we'll give you a discount you still gotta pay like 300 bucks and on tuesday because it's fourth of july and people are gone for the weekend on tuesday you can then come back in and we'll see about refunding you if everything clears but it's just like bro like i I don't give a fuck if it's fourth of july weekend somebody should be here that can override shit or that can hey like hey we're looking this shit up right now like so luckily for us I, pharmaceutical I companies go through that bro yeah but, like luckily for us we don't have to go through all of that shit because there is always an emergency pro- pharmacy out here that will provide necessity uh medication to keep anyone for free or anyone who's in yeah i mean like you know not wow. even for free it's like um you just go in there and say like look my person like you know like that's again accident and emergency you can call up the ambulance i'm not i'll kid you not you can call up 999 and say look my wait that's your emergency number whatever is <laughs> yes yeah. i didn't know that okay sorry go ahead nine, yeah triple nine, nine. nine so i can just call up triple nine and be Juice like world look <laughs> Like, look, my family member is in some dire situation. Bro, I kid you not, immediately, within five or 10 minutes, they will arrive, they will do all the checks, they will provide all the medication, they will do all of it, and they will turn around and stabilize everything. And then they'll give you, okay, so this is the prescription you might have to go, but also I would confirm with your doctors, you know, they all have, everyone has their medical record on hand, right? Yours, everyone, wherever they are attending this thing to. And then afterwards they will update it on the system so that the following day, once they provide given you the emergency medication and everything like that. So the following day you can go to the doctors and then afterwards get it, you know, sorted out immediately and you go and buy your medication, whatever it is. So it's straight yeah. forward. So luckily we are privileged for that shit. So I want to, I want to throw a couple of examples here and this is more of a, you know, like showing, showing, just like a moment of silence if we could for the people that i'm about to mention here because i'm gonna mention just maybe like two or three off of a list of thousands that are quite literally dying here in the states there's people dying every single day because of lack of insulin jeremy crawford age 39 from texas after he lost his job and his insurance 
Jeremy was struggling to afford insulin he needed to survive. He tried using the Walmart one, but it wasn't as effective as the one that he needed. As he got sicker, he started, he stopped calling 911 because the bills that he was getting from going to the emergency room and everything started piling up and he couldn't afford those either. He died from diabetic ketoacidosis. Again, uh, Jesmaya Scherer, age 21, in addition to managing his diabetes since he was the age of 10, he worked two jobs to support himself and was working on becoming an electrician. This year, however, it proved to not be enough. He began rationing his insulin, unable to fill prescriptions until the next payday. He was hospitalized in April with diabetic ketoacidosis. In June, two days after he'd last seen his family, he called in sick to work. He was found dead a day later. Lack of insulin. Like, bro, these are two people. Like, a 39 and 21. These are people that had their whole lives ahead of them. But they're literally forced to be in a position. And amongst thousands, where it's like, hey, man, you can only afford this much insulin. Let's say you can only afford two weeks worth of insulin. But you have to go throughout the whole month. There's people out there that is like, maybe if I take a dose today and skip tomorrow, maybe I'll make it. I just got to watch what I eat, maybe. Like, that's no fucking way to live, bro. Like, if it's no. if, if there's medication that literally is life and death, like, people will die without it. Why are people out there putting a paywall and basically causing people to die and giving more shits about their own wallet than they are about humans? Because money talks, man. That's, that's, that's the issue. The way that's it is, man. Capitalism. Like the, the thing of it is, like yeah. these, this big pharma, man. It, listen, the thing with big pharma is they care about this, and they have those life-saving drugs like insulin um, that they know people need, and they'll pay for it, just like gas. People need gas to get back and forth to work so they can jack the price up. It's it's all it is is just is just demand. There's there's a bunch of supply. They say that there's a shortage in insulin or they say that there's a shortage in this. But man, it, it's there. It's just people can't fucking afford. Can't afford it. Yeah. And, ins- and when you and pay again- for insurance out of your paycheck every week, right? Th- to me, that, that insurance it's just cover what that insulin because it's a life needing medication, but yet you're still gonna pay probably a hundred twenty dollars out of pocket for a bottle of insulin. Insurance isn't it, it isn't cheap either. Like uh, I believe it was Caveman. How much how much is it that you pay for insurance every month, bro? Each check is uh, seven hundred. Well, each check is three forty seven. Comes out of my check. Yeah, for same thing. Insurance. Each check. I pay fifteen. I pay it doesn't cover vision or dental either. It's just health. Oh, see, my mine's I get I get the whole nine yards, but like I pay almost almost fifteen hundred dollars a month, twenty five, twenty two thousand, oh, twenty two hundred dollars a month. That's fucking just for crazy. But and I, the bigger I, your family I, is, just yeah. But the bigger your yeah, family is, the more it costs too. You get me? Well, yeah, I pay for the higher insurance just for me and my wife, just in case we have a child. So that right. way, I'm not trying to scramble to freaking switch my insurance and. You know what I mean? It's already in yeah. set because then those doctor visits, man, are fucking expensive. Uh, you get the pre, the pre uh, natal fucking vitamins, man. They're expensive. Like we just literally just went yeah. to. We had to pay those uh, out of pocket here. Yeah, we went to Target here earlier, right? And they had two brands of Nyquil. Just for an example, you could pay ten dollars for this bottle, or three ninety nine for this bottle. Like the generic one they were they were the same exact fucking thing one just said vix and the other one just said target's brand mm-hmm. so a whole almost eight dollars for paying for a brand and it has the same exact ingredients oh yeah, yeah. then that's that again it's it's a, it's all comes down to capitalism and like again like what windu said um damn those people they had the whole lives ahead of them and let's just give, let me give, bring this into this thought process as well you see when shit like this happens and when this goes through and it comes into the media again right so for example you get told a so and so person passed away due to lack of you know 
money, all of this because they couldn't afford to pay for medical, all these kind of things. You know who's actually benefiting from that news? Big pharma companies again, because why? People are going to look at this as an example, right? And going to be like, yo, I don't want to be in this situation, right? Let me try and avoid being in this situation. And then they run through all sorts of debts in order to make sure all their medication is backed up. Yeah, but yeah, like, nice. like it's my issue, rob, starting to rob mom and pop pharmacies that are still there. Your corner, not your Walgreens, your Kenny's Drugs, or your Rite Aid, or your Walmart, BBS, or whatever. Yeah, mom. yeah, you're like your little mom and pop that are just like Kang's Pharmacy. You know, yeah, I don't know, know those here. existed anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't seen one in a while. Back up and up where we, me and my wife lived, there was a couple of them, but like stuff's more expensive there. But it gives. The people are starting to rob these places because it's easier to get your medication <laughs> instead of trying to rob a, a Walmart pharmacy. You have thousands of people like so. And that's the other thing is you're starting to make people result into some crime just to get mm -hmm. make sure that they don't die. So to I, I, I want to propose a question. Like, yeah, I want to propose a question to you guys real quick. <laughs> so do you guys because me being somebody that's, you know, I'm a career salesman. I understand capitalism. I typically support it. But am I the only one that feels that people shouldn't be able to exploit and make money like that when it comes to medicine? Like, it's different if it's a car. It's different if it's clothing. You get me like a normal shirt from Walmart versus having a Nike logo on it. Now that Nike logo shirt goes up in value. Like, I get it. Marketing and all that by all means, right? People... People spend their money how they want, but when it comes to a necessity, I don't think that that shit should be allowed. That shit should borderline be illegal. But they don't so consider. Like, but they don't consider medication to be a necessity, though. That's the it issue. It's is a necessity. No, but they don't classify necessity. it. They don't classify it as a necessity because there's more medications out there than there is life needing medications. They don't consider that a necessity at all. So, that's the issue because well, it's, well, it, it's the it same people if it's a it's the same people feeling it's necessary to send ukraine 800 million dollars while people at home are dying mm -hmm. it's the same fucking people man nobody gives a fuck about us man they don't care no, about us the, the, the problem, so obviously see, the, the separation is... of the rich and the poor mm -hmm. they're trying to get rid of everybody in the middle that's all see, it is doing that is sub, sending money to ukraine i get it you know that country needs help i i completely I get it Com no no i mean i understand the thought process behind it like you know a country supporting another country i completely get it but yo you need to sort out your own fucking in house problems first before you can fucking sort out outside problems right, right? it's so the same said, thing over here it's, it's the same thing over here right the amount of shit that we are doing bro I'm tired, like in my city, I am tired of seeing homeless people, right? I have seen a shit ton of homeless people, right? There is so many things that they can take care of. But what do I see everywhere? Instead of building a house or a con, you know, um, like a big building full of like even a studio flats or whatever it is, these motherfuckers in this council are encouraging student apartments that's only be let to students right nobody else only for students and i'm tired of seeing all these buildings rising up around the city to provide shelter for these students but then again they got student dorms this that everything that they can take care of utilize it they got private accommodation that they can opt in for right but for people who are actually standing there in the streets begging borrowing whatever it is and they don't have a freaking shelter to sleep but i you know what was heartbreaking i was saw a fucking child and a woman right in the middle of the street because they've been they got evicted right from the because when i was listening to this woman right she got evicted out of the house because she was in a council um given place right and she got evicted out of the house because she lost her job during this whole entire process so she was behind on rent and council tax right 
And because she was behind on rent and council tax, they were given an ultimatum. But the problem is because it's a council whose house, right? She had put in a complaint saying that there is a damp and all sorts of shit that's going around in the house. And in a, I'll give you a quick little intro. If you are living in a council house, you cannot fix the problem yourself. You have to call up the council, put in a request for a person to come in, do the inspection, and that shit can take up to two to three months. Yeah? Two to three months to resolve that problem, right? And then she, you literally turned around and said, look, I, I cannot do anything. I cannot stay in this house. Why am I paying rent to stay in this house, right? And while I can use that and cover so and so things, but then afterwards it came to a situation because she lost her job and everything. So she moved back into that place, right? But then she was forcefully evicted out of the house. Now she was living on the streets, living on the thing, whatever it was. And then afterwards now, luckily the housing aid people were able to give her some kind of like a safe, uh, you know, uh, property that she can stay in and do, you know, look after herself and the child and everything like that. But the fact is that like, bro, you could have told me that you could have given this one studio apartment flat to this woman who is struggling, right, in that building. But instead, you decide to fucking focus on a student who's going to fucking run that place down to the fucking ground and you couldn't do that shit. Like, you know how much fucking um, homelessness level within my city will drop down if they can fucking do that? Well, it's because that student's gonna have mommy and daddy's money to fix the repairs and to, they're just gonna squeeze the money out of them. You know, again, guys, yeah, just... there is no money in the cure. There's no money in the cure. They want to keep people sick. You know, that's why we have fast food places out the ass. You know, it's because yeah. they want to keep people, uh, keep people on insulin, keep people needing medicine so that way they can squeeze our pockets, man. You know, that's the whole just behind behind the operation, you know, and uh, people need to get prepared. We're fixing to hit a, a crazy depression, you know, way worse than our, our grand, great grandparents were, you know, so we need to start gardening. We need to start buying bags of rice, you know, start looking out for one another as a community because we are the only ones that we have, you know? We know that these big companies, Amazon, you know, Facebook, they don't care about us. They don't care about you connecting with your family and all that shit. They want your data. They want to make money off of you, you know? So again, you know, we need to harmonize as a community and get with one another and help one another. You know, if people around the community see that woman and and they, they have a heart, get together, man. There's oh, so yeah, many programs definitely. out there. I mean, I know? definitely feel like the government needs to get that shit together too. If I just they looked it up, like the like the insulin government. in the United States is about 800% more expensive than other developed economies. Yeah. There is nothing, yeah. no reason as to why besides greed. And the fact that it's the different. government that should be there taking care of the people should say, hey, cut that shit out. Like we understand you want to make money, but cut that shit the fuck out. Like you're playing with people's lives. And the only reason they, and I think the only reason they won't is because these companies will be like, we'll lower the price if you promise to pay for it. And the government's like, we're not going to pay for it. Yeah, and also, and also like, I know that, you know, uh, in your country, like, you know, they get candidates and they get supported by, you know, people who own fucking businesses and shit like that for their campaign donation and shit like that so that fucking decides their fucking path too on how to you know deal with certain shit um not saying that we don't clearly we have fucking one dumbass prime minister sitting in that fucking chair over there making all sorts of fucking stupid decisions right and still can't fucking figure out how to resolve a fucking situation back in his own country but he's more bothered about what's happening on the fucking outskirts of this country right it's just mind-boggling it fucking pisses me off when government when they have an opportunity i'm not saying yeah just give them free things like listen bro when it comes to like just a homelessness sort of point of view right you can give an individual a place to stay right but under certain conditions 
to fix himself to sort himself out give him a time frame to fix his fucking attitude and then afterwards go along with it put a plan or put a plan in action and say like listen bro if you don't hit these things and if you don't follow through with these things i'm sorry but you will have to find a way to live but so far we are giving you a lifeline to improve your situation how difficult is that it's not that fucking difficult especially when you're giving out fucking benefits to the people over here you're telling me you can't put a plan in place you taking the fucking piss or what come on man piss me off every time and i sit there and look at all these people every time every single time when i go to the city center and i just walking down minding my own thing minding trying to do my own shopping and then i just see like left and right i just see homeless people just asking for like 1 pound or 2 pound shit don't make fucking sense to me especially It's... when there's a ton of work you know what i'm saying there's work out there you can you can find yeah. i think that Uh, the society that we lived in is they have this entitlement issue you know social media and technology in, in general has put everything at our fingertips so people i would say most people not all people you know because there's some people out there that are really hurting but most people that take advantage of the of the system are they feel like they're entitled to it they're like i live in america i'm american so my needs every single need should be taken care of you know the most easiest way for me i shouldn't have to work for it i shouldn't have to suffer you know and and that's where the powers that be capitalize on because they're like mm -hmm. okay fine you know we'll give you a little bit of extra money to stay home to buy from us you know and they keep people slave and they keep people in that in that mentality where i don't have to work for it i don't have to bust my ass for this everybody else around me should take care of me mm -hmm. you know and and that's one of the biggest issues that we're we're dealing with um you know when it comes down to actually fighting inflation and shit like that you know it's just people are going to take a free handout every single time you know And yeah, big corp is gonna true. take advantage of that shit, bro. They're gonna take advantage of it every single time. You know? So I don't know, man. It's, it's disgusting, crazy. bro. Like I hate to say it that way. It's, especially but... like I I mean, for me the fact is that you told me about the whole insulin shit and the whole damn importance behind it. It's like How the fuck can you turn around and say, "Oh yeah, we'll give you a discount on top of that"? You're telling me that I have to wait a day after to <laughs> fetch it and we'll, like shut the fuck up, right? You wouldn't be saying the same shit if you or your family member was in that position, you bellend. You know what I mean? I would have cussed the Oof. fuck out of him. I would have cussed the fuck out of him. You well, they're just yeah. gonna have like, to reach in their skittle pocket and just. Pay the fucking money, bro. <laughs> Now, man, I've heard you know, of so many Americans going down to Mexico to buy buy the insulin. You know, because it's it's significantly cheaper. A dollar really? is worth more. Yeah, man. People in Texas go down to Mexico all the time. In California, they'll go down fetch their medicine. And the cool thing about Mexico is that you don't need a, a prescription. You don't need a doctor's note saying you need that. You go to the pharmacy and say, "Hey, man, I need insulin. I need yeah. perks or whatever I need," and they got you. You know, it's literally like the best Walgreens. You know, and that's what people do. Like over here, over here, things like insulin and stuff like that, you can buy it over the counter, no problem. You know, as yeah. long as you know medical record it shows that kind of stuff. But the fact is that, like you fucking Bell, and you're telling me that I drove all the way over here, and you're telling me that I have. It's the fourth of July. Like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Like you're giving like nothing but fucking excuses to me. I will fucking put you in a emergency accident and emergency if you fucking carry on. And let's see how quickly you will have to deal with this shit, you dickhead. You know what I mean? That that's the kind of thought process will go into my head at that particular yeah, moment. Yeah. You know how pissed off you would be, like especially yeah. knowing that your child that you're caring for is going through that situation and this motherfucker is putting up a price, mm -hmm. like blood. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's sad, man. Yeah, it's capitalism is fucked up in many ways. It's very disgusting, for sure. But let's um, let's go ahead and wrap it up here, quite frankly, because we're about that hour mark. Um, anybody that's watching, listening, definitely let us know in the comments below what you thought about this chat. We love engaging with your comments on a weekly basis. Let us know of any suggestions that you'd like for us to talk about too, like this suggestion of the whole um. You know necessity and this um not necessities uh, essentials and big pharma and stuff like that 
was actually suggested yeah. by Beard Wolverine. So shout out to Beard Wolverine out there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'll tell you what, guys. Like, it's the world is getting kind of scarier when you sit here and think about it. And I think only oh, yeah. only the rich have a reason to not be worried. Everybody else, we we really should keep our eyes open for sure. That's why we need to stick control, together, man. man. We need to stick together, you know. And especially hey, if people, if you're if you're having trouble getting food. Uh, anything reach out to your churches reach out to organizations in your in your community you know there is help out there it's just that people oh, yeah. lack Com the knowledge of where those resources are so just yeah. reach out so community wise there is always definitely a big help that you can give to individuals who are in dire need like you know especially for the elderly or people who are really struggling financially and stuff like that there are what you call i don't know if you guys over to there but we have what you call food banks and stuff like that that yeah. you can contribute like you know if you think you have a wasteful food in your apartment but you're not going to fucking touch even though it's donate it. and you're yeah. like, just donate it like what your 50 pence uh 50 cent or whatever you call it, you know it was it's not you know well, that that because think about think about how much money you're already wasting anyway right well and i work yesterday think... saturday sorry joker mm -hmm. like i'm like, talking about food banks and stuff like i work saturday like we had piles like four or five maybe six pallets just full of stuff paper plates napkins uh, rice, some canned goods that were dented that we just can't, that the health department doesn't take them. Like, we sent all that stuff out to like uh, Salvation Army and stuff like that, just so yeah. that way it wasn't just going to waste. Good. You know what I mean? And also, yeah, if awesome, you man. if you as individuals do not trust, like I know there are some individuals out there who don't even trust charities and stuff like that, that to do the correct um, things for them go out reach out for yourself if you see a person over there who was struggling over there instead of giving that person money or something which you don't feel like you don't want to give them money go buy them a supply of food instead of yeah. donating the money and give it to that person so that you know they have something at least you'll have it in your conscious that they got something to eat right at least minimum they got something to eat or if you have like a tent in your house that you're not fucking used for like fucking years old and you're never going to go fucking camping again give that shit as well so that you know they'll have something to sleep under at the end of the fucking night you know something so that they'll have some privacy at least in a little bit of sense you know what i mean yes. so yeah man as you as individuals can do a lot of change specifically to a one person out there you know and not saying that you have to do your whole you know give away everything in your fucking life i'm just saying <laughs> just do the may bare minimum just do a little bit of a bare minimum that you can do because that little bare minimum that you do has a big impact on this individual over the course of few days or a few weeks or even a month yeah. for that fact right so yeah just you know that could help them even engage and going out there give them the strength and the courage to go out there look for a job or something or yes. other. you never know to improve their lives so as much as i can don't be afraid to reach out yeah about this yeah don't be afraid to reach out we have our discord you're more than welcome to join you know window will link post that discord channel link out there and there is a section called you know life advice or life's issue whatever it is that you want to talk about raise your concerns speak out and um, let us know and we will probably give you some kind of a tips and guidance on how you can combat that situation or give you some kind of uh, information out there or probably try and eventually get you some kind of a help throughout that course right but yeah um feel free to hit us up anytime you want and if you have more suggestions leave a comment below and uh you know once we post this video so that we can also engage with you and see how we can um push some of this information forward to the people out there as well yeah for sure Heard. but let's wrap it up again thank you so much for watching guys uh we are posting these as far as podcast form google podcast we just got accepted for iHeartRadio and stuff like that so keep an eye out there for different formats and we really do appreciate all of you joining in and actually supporting these videos it really does mean the world to us keep giving us suggestions as far as stuff to talk about we're not afraid oh, to talk about any subject 
for sure and don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the like button and leave a comment because it all helps us but thank you very much and we will catch you on the next episode much love the peace, peace.